Hi there, I'm Ed China, and what car have asked me to talk to you about vans? Well, having owned a fair few in my time, I'm pretty familiar with vans, but actually, very recently, mine has been particularly useful because I've been moving all kinds of stuff around while preparing my workshop for my brand new YouTube show called Workshop Diaries. Yes, really. Anyway, enough of that. Get yourself a tea and a jammy dodger, and let me guide you through the worlds of commercial vehicles. We'll show you which ones are best and which are best left on the hard shoulder. And to make sure you don't miss an episode, do please push that subscribe button right now, immediately. In the car world, the Volkswagen Golf is considered a bit of a benchmark. But when it comes to vans, the Volkswagen Caddy Cargo doesn't have quite the same cachet. Which is odd, really, because the Caddy has a bit of a secret. It's actually a Golf. The Volkswagen Caddy has always had a loose connection with the Volkswagen Golf since it first went on sale in 1980. Which makes a lot of sense, as they're about the same size and have been known to share the same engines. So, while the larger Transporter remains the brand's commercial icon, the Caddy has actually developed something of a cult following over the years, thanks to its car-like handling, impressive build quality and solid residuals. Which brings us to this all-new fifth-generation Caddy Cargo, or the Caddy 5. Now, it's underpinned by a brand new chassis which is based on Volkswagen Group's MQB platform, a modular design platform which has been used for all kinds of small to mid-sized cars, including the Audi A3, the Skoda Octavia, and yes, of course, even the Golf. So I'm going to say it even though I don't really want to, but it does mean that the Caddy Cargo is even more car-like than ever before. But why is that? Well, MQB platform aside, there's an all-new 2.0-litre diesel engine under the bonnet, which is both quieter and cleaner than the unit it replaces. While the interior is smarter, more modern and generally a lot less van-like than you'd expect. Talking of that 2.0-litre diesel engine, it's available with 74, 101 or 120 brake horsepower. Or if you prefer petrol power, there's a 1.5-litre unit with 112 brake horsepower. There's also manual and automatic gearbox options. You can have it as a short or long wheelbase panel van, and you can even specify four-wheel drive. Handy if your job occasionally takes you off the beaten path. There are three trim levels and a total of 19 safety features, six of which are brand new. Then there's the all-important load space. Now, manufacturers generally try and keep this bit exactly the same when they upgrade a model because obviously changing it can be very annoying and very expensive. Think of it like this. Now, when a manufacturer brings out a new phone with a slightly smaller charging port, you don't really care, you buy it anyway. But of course, then you get it home, you suddenly realise that all of your accessories now need to be replaced. The headphones, the speakers, the car accessories. It can get quite expensive. But imagine if that was the inside of your van, if all your workbenches, your racking, all of that had to be replaced, it'd be very very, very expensive. But there's good news for new caddy owners because unlike a new charging port that generally gets smaller when it's updated, the inside or the back of our caddy has just got a little bit bigger. Yeah. So now there is 60 millimeters more width between the wheel arches, 28 millimeters more height and 20 millimeters more length. That means the regular short wheelbase caddy is now 1855 millimeters wide, 4,500 millimetres long and has an overall height of 1856 millimetres, giving you a load space length of 1797 millimetres, a width of 1614 millimetres and 1272 millimetres in height. Meanwhile, the long wheelbase Caddy Cargo Maxi adds 353 millimetres to the length of the van, making it 4,853 millimetres long and increasing its load length to 2,150 millimetres. All of those changes to the dimensions means that the Caddy now has an internal load space of 3.1 meters cubed, whereas the Caddy Cargo Maxi has a load space of 3.7 cubic meters. And that's great news for volume hungry van drivers, but unfortunately it's slightly less promising news when it comes to payload, because the maximum weight that a standard Caddy can manage is 687 kilograms, and the Maxi is restricted to 700 kilograms. Now, to put that into some kind of perspective, the Ford Transit Connect, the Caddy's most obvious rival, can manage 967 kilograms, and the Vauxhall Combo can manage over a tonne. Just think of it, it sounds like a Golf. Now might be a good time to discuss the Caddy's rivals in a little more detail, because since last time VW launched a Caddy, there have been some pretty big changes in the small van segment. The Ford Transit Connect that we mentioned earlier is actually no longer the de facto best seller in the segment and is instead constantly battling against the Citroen Berlingo, Peugeot Partner and Vauxhall Combo. As a result, the Caddy has slipped a long way down the pecking order, which means this fifth generation model has a lot of ground to make up. Where the Caddy's rivals are really up their game is in the driving department, 
with Citroen, Peugeot and Vauxhall all successfully marrying elements of their road cars into their vans. VW's engineers have done the same thing with the new Caddy, but arguably their starting point is even better, because as we now know, this is basically a Mark 8 Golf in disguise. And the MQB underpinnings that I mentioned earlier are a massive improvement on the previous Caddy chassis. Not that that should come as any surprise. The previous Caddy might have had a range of punchy engines, but they were all rather noisy, and also the ride was a little on the firm side. In comparison, this new van is super quiet and significantly more comfortable, thanks to the addition of coil springs rather than leaf springs for the rear. The steering in the old van was also a little too light and sensitive, but now it feels much more purposeful and connected to the road, and that's largely due to VW having replaced the old hydraulic steering system with a new electric power steering setup. VW did something similar in the Crafter and the Transporter, and both really benefited from it, and the Caddy has too. Now this is the 120 brake horsepower model, which uses the new 2.0-litre TDI engine, which is far more refined than the old version. Now yes, I can still hear it whirring away in the background, but it's significantly quieter. So much so, I can actually hear way more road noise than I was expecting, but it's far from intrusive. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this 2.0-litre diesel engine is also available with two other power outputs, 74 brake horsepower and 101 brake horsepower. And because all of them are turbocharged, they offer plenty of torque across a wide rev range. None of them feel underpowered. Now, the 101 brake horsepower engine would be the most pragmatic choice because it's the best compromise between performance and economy. These new engines also have something called twin dosing, which is VW's nifty way of improving those pesky emissions by injecting AdBlue into the SCR catalytic converter at two different locations. This means it can inject just the right amount of AdBlue for when the engine is idling or under low strain, while also catering for higher loads such as motorway driving. It's clever stuff and is said to reduce emissions by 80% compared to the previous generation of engines. A six-speed box comes as standard on a Caddy, which is actually unusual because most vans of this size would come with a five-speed box. The gearbox itself seems well suited to the engine and the shifting action is slick and purposeful. I'd go as far as to say it has an air of golf about it. Then there's the seven-speed DSG automatic gearbox with paddles on the steering wheel. Now this is only available on the highest power diesel and the petrol option. Now it's a great choice for city drivers, but also lazy ones like myself, who are happy to do away with using their left foot. Now it's got super smooth changes, but they're also lightning quick. It's just a shame that it's only available on two engine options. Now on the plus side, there's a whole range of new features that all caddies get, thanks to that new electric power steering system. Does that sound like a Golf? Moving from a hydraulic to an electric setup has allowed VW to integrate many of the safety systems from the Golf 8 into the Caddy, bringing it bang up to date with all the latest technology. There are now 19 safety systems in the Caddy, and six of them are completely new, like the optional Intelligent Adaptive Cruise Control System. Once this is set, it can close the gap between you and the car in front when travelling at speed to stop other drivers from cutting in while also providing just enough space to allow for other safety systems like brake assist to slow you down should you need it. There's also road sign detection, which automatically adjusts the cruise control to the speed limit, lane keeping assist, and a self parking system. Now, if you use all of the technology, it's probably the easiest van to drive on the market. You could even do it blindfolded. Ooh, that sounds like a golf. The old Caddy interior was a little bit plain. Practical, yes, but pretty drab. That has now changed, and the interior is far more modern and packed full of technology. All models get some form of central screen as standard, either a 6.5-inch version or a full 10-inch touchscreen like we have here. The entry-level 6.5-inch screen is sufficient for your everyday needs of music or making calls, but the crystal-clear 10-inch screen is the sexy carryover from the Golf. Now, it's an impressive centrepiece to the van, but these touch sensitive controls can be a little bit fiddly, particularly when looking even for just the simpler stuff like volume control or heating. But also when you consider this is a working environment, the occupants may be required to be wearing gloves or of course have dirty fingers and may be muddying that lovely clean screen with its slide controls. 
That niggle aside, it's a really modern, smart interior, and you do get the sense that you're in a quality vehicle. It even has USB-C connectors there in the dashboard, and also the option of wireless phone charging, and also wireless connection to Apple CarPlay, a first for any van. Next is gonna be asking me to do a TikTok or follow on Insta. How modern. There are three trim levels, but they're no longer called start line, trend line, and high line. Instead, you'll be looking at choosing between entry level commerce, mid range commerce plus, or the top of the range commerce pro. Simple enough, right? Standard equipment includes electric door mirrors, an electronic handbrake with auto hold, and a multi-function steering wheel, which might not sound like much, but it's worth noting that the six and a half inch infotainment screen with DAB radio and Bluetooth is standard on all models. There's also cruise control with a speed limiter function and a load of safety systems. Commerce Plus vans look a little more sophisticated with body color bumpers, but they also get some genuinely useful features such as rear parking sensors, manual air conditioning, a leather trim steering wheel, and useful underseat storage for both the driver and passenger. There's also a driver's armrest and lumbar support with a more adjustable driver's seat, ideal if you're prone to getting backache after a long day behind the wheel. Meanwhile, Commerce Pro vans get alloy wheels, gloss black exterior mirror housings, front parking sensors, LED taillights, an alarm, and inbuilt navigation with the 10 inch color touchscreen we mentioned earlier. Although it's worth noting that the upgraded screen is also available as an option on lesser models. Still not quite the sound of a Golf. Now, when it comes to buying the Caddy Cargo, we'd actually go for the mid-range Commerce Plus trim, although there are a few other options that are worth noting. Certainly, there's a very temptingly priced mid-size 8.3-inch infotainment touchscreen that we'd recommend. And also, if you happen to go for the standard Commerce version of the van, then definitely go for those storage bins under the front seat. And if you go for the leather steering wheel option, that also allows you to upgrade to the adaptive cruise control as well. Now on paper, the Caddy Cargo may well be the best small van on the market. Its new engines make it cleaner, the redesign makes it look better, and the new interior is definitely more modern. And it certainly drives as well as the best vans in the sector. In fact, it's even slightly more spacious than the van it replaces. But there's just one thing I'm not quite sure about. It doesn't sound like a Golf, but then it's not a Golf, it's a Caddy. So it certainly gets the Ed Factor seal of approval, and what car give it four stars? Want to see more van reviews from me? Then subscribe to the What Car channel. You'll see each of my new reviews as soon as they're released, and in between, you'll also get to watch other reviews by the lovely people at What Car.